So this is the Dash Urban Stealth LT1 hiking tent that I plan on taking away flying with me. The reason I've chosen this one is because I only need to, to sleep one person when I'm going away with my mates. Um, if I'm going away with my other half, we'll stay in hotels, so that's fine. Um, I chose this one because it is nice and small, it is nice and light. Uh, in fact, it weighs less than the sleeping mat and the sleeping bag. In fact, I think the sleeping bag is the heaviest piece of the whole kit. This combined with the sleeping mat and the sleeping bag comes to about five kilos all up. So anyway, just a quick walk around. Um, obviously, you've seen the video of me setting it up already. Um, everything has to be guy lined out on this in order for it to be the way it needs to be. If in order for everything to be taught, all of these little guy lines here have to be hooked up. Now, there is an issue with that, and I'll show you what that issue is in a second. So you can just see, walk around. I am set up on a bit of a slope here, so it's not really the best location to set it up. But as I said, all the guy lines have to be set up in order for it to remain taut. So anyway, it opens up with two zips. One on each side. And then we just throw that over the top. And now you can see that there's not a whole lot to it. Now, first observation is for the door for the tent. There's only this flywire here. There's no, most tents that I've seen that are like this have a plastic or, or um, nylon or whatever this is, polyester uh, door. This one doesn't, it's only got the flywire. So you're going to want to be careful about taking care of that because you get any sort of holes in that, you're not going to be able to block off things from coming in. The second observation is these poles. Now, up the top, there's this little pocket. We come way down the bottom here, and they just go onto the ground. Now, looking at the side of the tent, there's nowhere for these poles to clip in. Anyway, here, look back here, there's nothing. So, nothing. So they have to go on the ground. What I'm thinking about doing is getting some little rubber plates or rubber pads or something that I can put those on because it's not, the ground's not very moist here, but you can already see that's starting to dig into the ground. Now, if we're going away for a weekend away where this is going to be set up for two or three days and in a paddock, that's going to end up burying itself into the ground. So that's the first comment there. And it's the same thing at the other end. There's a pole at the other end. Obviously, you can adjust this for the maximum tension. But again, you can see the ground is, the, the grass might be green, but the ground's not terribly damp here. And that's already starting to, to dig into the ground. Okay, so that's that. Now, as I said, none of this will stay to it unless the guy lines are on. That brings me to the second major observation. And that is, we open up the flywire. Those. You can probably see that. One of those things. Now, once you're in here, there's not a lot of room. Probably a little bit more room than the swag. But not a huge amount of room. Now, this is where the next observation comes in. This here. This seam here. If you don't have the guy lines set up and you don't have the flap for this vent pegged out, this seam sags and it makes what is enough room in here become not enough room in here. So that is a pretty important observation. While it's cosy at the moment, you can see how cosy that is, it's quite, quite cosy. Um, if I let those, that flap down, that vent flap down, and let those guy lines down, it becomes real cosy. Too cosy. So, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. What it is gonna allow is cool air to come in. Um, and I tend to be too hot and intense anyway. So that's probably not a major issue for me. Once the outside is down, 
that will probably be okay. Um, it's probably not going to allow too much cross flow, but again, having no solid door here, um, it's going to allow more cross flow sort of through here and out the edges than if it had a solid door there. So that's my first observation. It'd be nice if um, the guy lines that peg this out, and I'll show you those in a second, um, if they were actually attached to the corners of the seams here and down the other end there. You sort of see just there. It'd be nice if they were attached there as opposed to on this flap. Um, so I don't know, maybe that might be an improvement that we make later. We might uh, get the sewing machine out and put some reinforcing tabs on or something and peg it out from there. Now to look at it from the other end, up to the head, you can see, and I've just popped it out of the thing. So I'm now holding the fly wire up. See, there's a reasonable amount of room there. Crawling in. I am fairly tall, we're at six foot two. And you can see, my feet, my head's pretty well right up the top end. My feet are just off the edge of the mattress and they're just touching that. So it'll be sufficient, but sufficient is probably the right word. I wouldn't want to live in here for a week, let's put it that way. And there you can see the wire that comes down. And then once you zip the outside over, it all becomes quite private, I'll show you that. The outside zips up. Now you can see there's a little bit of room. You can throw a bag in there, something, but there's not a whole lot of extra room in here. Um, I guess if you were didn't have too many bugs and stuff around, you could pin that up there, and then you get a bit more elbow room. But with that closed, it's not a massive amount of room in here. There's enough room for me to sort of lie down and, and be comfortable, but you know, there's not a lot of room between my shoulder and that. If I lie the other way, face, facing the other way, it'd probably be a bit more, but I like laying towards the door of the tent. That's just me, my personal preference. All right, I'll jump back out. And I'll show you that flap I was talking about. So the space in here is determined by how taut all of these guy lines are. And I've got them fairly taut here at the moment. You can see this ridge line here. There's a light down there. That ridge line only stays that taut if that flap is, pe is, is pegged out. And I'll do is I'll loosen them off, so which, which means that vent is open. So if you decide it's too breezy, and you want to close that vent, and let the guy lines off, all of a sudden, it might not look like much from out here, but it makes a big difference inside. All of a sudden, that edge is no longer taut. And if we look inside, We can see this whole side down is sagging down, and that's what it does, it tightens this up. So that being said, uh, for the money, and I mean, you have to remember, this is an $80 tent. $80 Australian, that's all this cost me. For the money, uh, and for the weight, the weight's the big thing, and for the size, I think it's a pretty good deal. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, hopefully the next time I uh, do a video of this setup, I'll also be doing videos of us uh, gallivanting around the bush in airplanes that are flying in and out of places that were never really designed for airplanes. Anyway, that's it. Have a good one.